Ah, a flower pot. <laughs> hey, Hickok 45, is this a pretty gun or what? Savage 99, a classic rifle. Uh, not in my collection, I have never owned one, but this is a uh, firearm that a uh, viewer lent us, and uh, so we're happy to bring it to you. It's in 300 Savage. Those are 300 Savage rounds, and they seem savage-like as they hit that red plate, uh, but it's a, it was a very popular cartridge in the early part of the 1900s, so let's put this thing down, let you take a look at it. 300, uh, or Savage 99 in 300 Savage. Unusual lever gun. Uh, uh, the predecessors of this, of course, are the 1892 and then the 1895, and then that evolved to the 1899 model, which you're looking at. And uh, quite, quite history, you know, the Savage Arms Company has a lot of history. I tend to forget about Savage. I, you know, not by design. I've just never really owned a Savage rifle, and I know that they make a fine rifle. Uh, any place you go, people are bragging about the accuracy and uh, and uh, how well they're made, uh, and and a really uh, fine gun for the money these days. So uh, this one, of course, is 99, 1899. It was uh, chambered in about 15 different cartridges. This one is chambered in the 300 Savage, I say, and that cartridge was developed in uh, 1920. And uh, I think the, I may be wrong, but I think one of the most popular cartridges for this gun was the Savage 303, which was not as powerful as the uh, 300 Savage. This round they thought would uh, come very close to the 30 6 ballistically. And it's not too far off, but it didn't quite uh, you know, reach that. And uh, it has a shorter action. So it couldn't be chambered for the 30-06. You know, that's a long cartridge, the 30-06 is. And uh, so they were, really, this is kind of the predecessor of parent, grandparent of the 308. You know, 762 by uh, 51 in a lot of ways. Because they were taking a cartridge, uh, a shorter one, trying to uh, equal the 30-06, you know, ballistically, which is what really the 308 did later. So this is kind of the forerunner of the 308, just not as powerful. Uh, not not as much pressure it can't withstand as much pressure, but pretty stout This was a very popular big game round back in the 1920s and 30s 40s You know and some people still use it another thing about that too is in some countries I know like France for example and there are others where the NATO rounds are not legal for civilians to own So and I believe that's still the case So if you're in France, even if you have a firearm a rifle you're allowed to have I know it's pretty strict there but you cannot have uh, something like like this, or you know some of the guns you see us shoot, uh, chambered in 308, you know the NATO round. So uh, cartridges like this are more popular than than maybe they are in this country, okay? Or our government allows us to have a 308. Aren't they kind? Yeah. So we can have cartridges, the 223, 556, the 308, and uh, all the fine uh, rifles that are chambered for those. So, uh, I mean, is this a beautiful gun or what? Uh, I've seen these for years and just haven't really known that much about them. The uh, Notice you have a round counter here. We'll show you that. When it's loaded, it shows you how many rounds you have left. It's not exactly high tech, but it, uh, it toggles through there and uh, shows you how many rounds you have left. You actually have a chamber, loaded chamber indicator. It's like an XDM or something, it? a Ruger. Interesting. So, uh, different kind of lever. Now, those of you who, before we shoot it again, might be asking, especially if you're kind of new to firearms, that is an ugly lever gun. It's so different from uh, what you're used to seeing in the Wild West. Why would they have come up with that back in the 1890s? You know, here we have the more classic lever gun. Don't make fun of my buttstock there now. But, uh, you know, the, the classic lever gun uh, with your tubular magazine under the barrel. Don't have that with this gun. All the rounds are right in there, okay? Makes for an ugly gun. Well, just a different gun. So, why did they come up with that? As with the 1895 Winchester, if you've ever seen one of those, that was chambered for uh, some pointy bullets. A little quick lesson here. Again, no extra charge. But you know, when you have rounds in the magazine under here, uh, they're stacked you know, right on top of each other, of course, all the way out. Well, think about recoil. And look where this bullet is right up against the primer of the one ahead of it. See, imagine that. You've got all these bullets stacked in here in this tube. You just don't see them, right? Well, I myself would prefer to have a flat-nosed bullet uh, against that primer. Don't know about you. 
<laughs> but I think most people would because under heavy recoil, you know, you've got pressure there and they could be banging, you know, together. And I'd just soon not have a lot of rounds go off inside my magazine while I'm holding the gun. And my hand is right here. So anyway, that's why most lever guns, the most the rounds you see for the traditional lever guns are flat nosed. Okay? Relatively flat nosed. I see some, uh, the 35 Remington, some of those rounds are, they're not all that flat. I get a little nervous sometimes a little bit. You know, everybody you know, says that's fine. But uh, what you're not going to see, though, uh, are rounds like this. Now, what, here's, how would you like to have these in a tubular magazine with, uh, with that, that situation? Now, isn't that lovely? That's like a firing pin right against that primer. So, for those of you who didn't know, that's why you don't see uh, cartridges for lever guns that look like that, or the Spitzer bullet, a, a pointed bullet. Unless, I know what some of you are thinking, uh, getting ready to type a comment, right? <laughs> the uh, lever lution or lever evolution bullets. You know, I've not even bought any of those before. I never have used them. But there are some rounds. I think it's Hornady, isn't it? Sorry if it's not Hornady. But... Uh, or whoever makes them or loads them, they do make some with a uh, kind of a polymer tip. So you, you end up with a bullet, maybe that's flat, the actual lead or copper, but they have a polymer tip on it that causes the bullet to be shaped more like that. Okay, so you get more velocity out of it and, and you get all the advantages of a pointed uh, bullet like this. And when it's in a tubular magazine, all you have is instead of that uh, copper and lead, you have rubber against the primer, so it's not dangerous. Okay, so, so those things are available. All right, so if you have a traditional type gun. But anyway, back in the day, they wanted uh, to be able to load things like, you, you're talking 1890s now, remember, that's when uh, the, uh, the Krag Jorgensen came about, you know, the bolt, some of the fine bolt guns, and uh, these wonderful military cartridges, you know, getting more velocity, smokeless powder, remember, if you've been watching the videos, you should have learned the lesson now. Smokeless powder came into uh, to common use in the 1890s. And so, so you could get more velocity, and there was the desire to have better bullets, uh, more aerodynamic bullets, and that means pointed bullets, generally speaking. So just we're limited with a tubular magazine. Okay, so what this did was it puts them on top of one another. As you can see, you put them in there. Now, this is just a little tricky getting the first one in, uh, just a little bit. Once you get started, though, then they go fine. Let me grab a couple more here. And so it loads like your, you know, kind of your standard uh, uh, magazine, you know, for a gun like this. Although it's it's got a drum in there, and so you're actually pushing them down into that drum that's on a, has a spring-loaded drum that revolves. So it's it's it, even that is fairly unique. Okay, and it holds five. Okay, and I'm gonna put one in the chamber and put the safety on. There's a the safety right there. It locks up the the lever and the trigger. Okay. Safety is on. Now I'll point it down range, and you can see that's well, not showing really clearly, but since there's one in the chamber, it's showing there's four more left in the magazine. Okay? So you have an indicator there in terms of uh, how many rounds you have. It's pretty nice. I don't know of any other old rifles like this that, that have that, so that's pretty neat. Okay? This was also one of the first hammerless designed firearms, the least exposed hammer. The 1895 version of this was the very first. Uh, hammerless lever gun. Yeah. Now, most guns they have to have a hammer or a striker to fire the firing pin, but you don't have a hammer as you do, you know, with this gun. Okay, internal. So it, the gun is hot. Let's put our ears on. Just take a couple shots here. Uh, it seems to shoot pretty well. Uh, the the sights are pretty much right on. Uh, again, I have a long time getting a clear focus on them, but but just good enough to hit that plate. So that's kind of fun. Let's just, uh, let's see if it's watermelon worthy here. Let's take that one over there first. You know what? Let's take the safety off. There we go. Watermelon worthy. Pretty good job. Let's see if it's two liter worthy. <laughs> oh, wow. Let's, let's see if it's 12 ounce worthy. I can hit it. <laughs> Took care of that, didn't it? All right, let's try that other 12 ounce. All right, we have one more round. <laughs> ha! 
Packs a little punch. It really does. Packs a little punch. And it's a pretty gun. I mean, it's a pretty gun. We're out here on another hot, sweaty day, as you can tell. But uh, John and I don't let that bother us too much. Uh, we just stay at it. We, uh, we've always been outside oriented. Uh, you know, this gun uh, feels good, too. It shoulders well. The stock is, uh, I'll have to get some ballast all on that stock as soon as we finish. Uh, it's all sweaty. But it just, it just feels good. Now it's empty, and I'm gonna close that up, put the safety on. And like I said, I was not all that familiar with one of these. I have never owned one, but it's a really handy gun. You know how some guns, especially if you have a scope on it, but, uh, and one of the reasons I, I guess I've preferred uh, having a rifle without scopes and gigantic sights and things hanging all over it in a way. It's just nice to be able to pick up a rifle like this and it's just so carryable. You know, I can just take off across the field. You know, I mean, you have to be safe. But I always love a gun where I can grab it right in the center there of gravity. And it's just so handy, up, you know, lever one in, bang. You know, there's just something attractive about a firearm like that, you know. So, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's an odd looking gun if you're used to the traditional lever guns. I've always noticed that when I see one of them. That's an odd Savage, you know, Savage 99. I'm really not that familiar with it, but I'm a little more familiar with it now. And I'm glad to learn about it because it's a very interesting gun, interesting looking. Uh, no doubt about it, a beautiful piece of wood in it. And uh, just, just gorgeous. So, uh, like I said, it was chambered in several, it was chambered in 3040 Crag. In fact, I think the, uh, the 92 or the 95 version of it uh, was adopted by the New York National Guard. I don't think the contracts were ever fulfilled, but it was, it was uh, just an attractive gun. 3030, uh, 3855, and just numerous other cartridges. So uh, that's a sign of a popular gun and a successful gun if it's chambered in a lot of different cartridges, especially popular cartridges. Just not not suited for the 30 out six because it's such a long, a long one. Now what else about it? Let's put a round in, and let's just load it up here again, and uh, take notice of that. Uh, loaded chamber indicator that's kind of interesting for the times especially and this is ammo that is available 300 savage just about any type of round is out there uh, of course you can hand load them uh, and it's not cheap of course but but you can find you know different rounds like this there you go see it's protruding a little bit there loaded round indicator <laughs> pretty interesting and uh and then, of course, I've got four left in the magazine again because I put five in and I put one in the chamber. Beautiful piece of walnut. A classic firearm, no doubt about it. Some of you own these and uh, you probably uh, really prize uh, this firearm. Just a good-looking gun. Good-looking gun. We really appreciate uh, the viewer lending this uh, to us. It, uh, again, as I've said before, it really... It really helps, uh, you know, the, the channel in, in general. It, it gives you all another gun to kind of admire and look at and uh, salivate over just like me. Uh, I, I just, I thoroughly enjoy this. Guns that I have never owned or had and, and I don't have to go buy one to enjoy it, you know, for a couple of weeks. I, I've shot this a little bit and I've just kind of checked it out. I've done a little research on it. I've learned more about it. And uh, just like you guys, you know, I'm, I'm constantly, uh, you're, you're kind of a, uh, I guess you have a window into the hobby here at the compound and I continue with that. We don't do things just for videos. Uh, John and I love firearms and love learning about new firearms, old firearms and just shooting them. And uh, so this is one of the benefits of doing what we do. You know, we, uh, we get to learn about some guns that are really neat and they're, are classics that I just haven't, haven't had, you know, haven't, uh, haven't happened to uh, own yet. So pretty neat, pretty neat. I like this gun. Uh, like I say, you've got a hammerless design, you've got your cartridges on top of one another, you know, as they're in the, in the magazine, so it doesn't matter how sharp the point is. The Winchester 95 is like this. You know, you're able to load uh, hot rounds in it, too, and uh, pointed bullets, so they're stacked, and that's what you get instead of the tubular magazine. So, literally any bullet would work. Let's take a few more shots, because, you know, it is hot, safety's on. And we have some more goodies to shoot. Let's take the safety off this time and uh, try a two liter. <laughs> Just about put that one on top of the tree. Let's go back to the red plate, see if I can see that sight. higher 
are low. I know where to hold if I can see the sight. <laughs> now you notice what I did there, little lesson. I wasn't sure uh, what part of the sight I was seeing, so I moved up over where the, there's more light over there, and I got my bead where it needed to be, then I brought it back on the red plate. So, this little trick I learned back in the 1800s when I was hunting uh, antelope and brown bear. So, pretty neat gun. Uh, Savage 99, that's, that's a beaut. And again, the cartridge came along in 1920, uh, trying to uh, equal the ballistics of the 30 out six in a shorter case and, and coming close, but not, not quite that, that far. In fact, it's not as powerful as a, uh, a 308. Yeah, so, uh, but a nice cartridge. Very, uh, very uh, popular and, and pretty darn effective. Interesting little design. You notice your, your lever is, is, is so different. Uh, just a different affair there. Whenever I see these in, in the gun shows, I always think it looks like it's, you know, broken or something. It's just a different, different design. Very, very popular. Then close it up, push your safety forward, locks everything up. So, works pretty well. Just a, a simple, functional design and a beautiful piece of walnut, I would say. None of that laminate tree stuff. That's a beautiful piece of walnut right there. So now, and the reason I've got these 45 set again, we were going to show you the flat, the flat nose on the bullets. You know, whenever you use a uh, tubular magazine. Let's take a couple more shots. This is some uh, Bitterroot Valley ammo, 150 grain, and uh, you know that's what we're firing. Make it safe, y'all. Put a couple more in here before we wrap up. The, the predecessor to this gun, the, the 1892, was actually uh, in the same trials for the new military rifle in the United States. Uh, you know, when the, the Krag was selected, there was a Savage in those tests, the 92 version, which later became the 95, and then the uh, 99, which I have in my hands. All right, let's do some speed shooting. Oh, let's don't say we did. <laughs> oh, there's a 12 ounce left. I think I hit the 2x4. Sure did. And we have a Walmart watermelon left. <laughs> wow. Did the job on that. And let's go back to that plate one more time. finished on a hit which I like to do <laughs> again this gun could probably drive nails out there it's a uh, it's a business of my being able to, to see that sight and not being fuzzy but my eyes are just good enough where I can I can I can do okay uh, now one of these days and you may see me doing it I'm gonna learn to, to shoot left-handed and it feels really awkward to me but just just again a little bit of added information no charge my left eye is extremely clear and it would be so much simpler to see targets and hit shooting that way. I may start working on that. I don't know. You know, never too old to learn something new, right? But anyway, the Savage 99 is a, is a classic rifle. The 300 Savage round is a classic round. Still in use today, still available, as you see. I ordered it last week, and there they are. Voila, I've got ammo for this thing. Uh, beautiful gun, uh, interesting history, and uh, just just... Just one of those treasures of the, the firearms world we're lucky to have access to. So I hope you enjoyed that. Life is good.